Hey everyone, it's Leanne Up. Welcome back to DIY Beauty on Purpose. Today I am going to show you how to turn these three trashed recyclables into beautiful home decor. So stay tuned. So I am starting with these three little tiny bottles. These were supplement um, chocolate shakes for, for toddlers or for kids. And I have three that were empty. So I am going to spray paint them using this Rust-Oleum spray paint. It's very textured and it has like a beige tone to it. So I'm going to go outside and start spray, spray painting them. Now here's the thing. Bam. <laughs> that spray has some power to it. So I added a rock inside of the bottle and it was still too strong, guys. These little bottles were flying. And if I had this somewhere where I can like turn them upside down and like hang them somewhere, that would have been great. But I just don't want to get spray paint anywhere. So I just backed up a bit more. I just went further back with the spray and it did it did the work. So here's what I'm talking about. This texture is beautiful. It almost looks like sand. And when it dries, it dries, as you can see, very matte and almost like sandpaper. That is what it felt like, but it just looked beautiful. So I focused mainly on the bodies of the bottles. Now I wanted them to have a little detail to the front. So I grabbed this huge stencil, but I'm only gonna use the little tiny spade there in the middle. And I'm just going to use some Rust-Oleum chalk paint and the Country Gray and just stencil that tiny little spade. That's it. Keeping it simple and just stenciling that to the front. And I think it just adds a little detail, but not too much. So once the stencil was dry, I then took some raffia ribbon. I bought this so long ago, guys. I can't even tell you where or how much it was. It was that long ago. I found it as I was organizing and cleaning my ribbons. And I was so excited. Uh, so I don't know how much it cost, but I'm sure you can find it on Amazon or, or any crafting store. And I just thought instead of jute twine, I'm just going to use this raffia because it just makes it look so cute. And I'm just going to wrap the top just to hide that... Uh, where you could tell that it was a bottle. So I'm just going to use hot glue in the beginning and towards the end to secure it. And that will be it, guys. And look how cute these look. I'm in love with them. I mean, they just look so feminine, so chic, just very farmhouse-ish. I mean, I just, it can go with any decor and look at that texture, just stunning. I just love them. Alright, for my second DIY, I'm going to use this empty container. This used to be one of those dis disinfecting wipes that we've all been using quite a bit lately. I ran out of this one and I thought, hey, I'm going to use this for a DIY. I'm going to give it two light coats of a flat white from rust -Oleum. And again, just taking it outside and just, and because it's already white, I, um, I didn't have to like worry about coverage. I just wanted it to have a fresher, brighter look. And um, again, not worried about making sure it's full, full coverage, um, but just wanted to have a fresh look. And I am using the nifty little spray attachment for the bottle or for the can. And it just so, it works so much better. After the two light coats were dry, I took it back inside and now I am drilling some holes in just right underneath that rim um, on the top. And this is where I messed up guys. So if you're going to recreate something like this, my advice is 
draw a line, measure, make sure you stay in a straight line because I did not. I thought eyeing it out would be fine and it backfired. So I did not stay in a straight line and there it is. You could see that is just not even. <laughs> but hey, you live and you learn. Now I know. Take the extra time to measure, draw a line, a light line, whatever it may take to make sure. You see how uneven that is. In the end, it turned out fine with what I'm going to do with it. But it was bugging me so much. But it is what it is. So now I'm going to take this sponge. These are one of those scrubby sponges that you use for your dishes. And I cut about an inch off of, off of it. And I'm going to use the shorter side and the country gray Ristonium chalk bean. And I'm just going to add this little design. You can add any design you want. I just wanted to stay with a kind of like a V or triangle kind of look for this project. So I'm just going to do that all around. And then I am going to do the same thing on the bottom of that one, but in between the the one the design on top. And there I am pointing out again how disappointed I am <laughs> with how curvy and uneven that line is. I, I did not worry about doing the design on the bottom of the container because I am going to wrap it. I'm going to use the same raffia ribbon I used earlier and I am going to just start right underneath but just, just kind of going over the very bottom of the last design there to... Um, uh, just to start there so that it looks nice and even and flush and that's it I'm just going to secure the the edge or the first edge and then uh, I'm just going to wrap it The nice thing about wrapping it with something like this is that you don't have to worry about coverage because if you see a few little lines, you just scrunch it up, you know, you move it up as, as you start seeing it and it's no big deal. And then I'm just going to hot glue the very last line, that way it is nice and secure. And of course being very careful not to burn myself. But I do have the hot glue gun in the low setting because I'm working with plastic and I want to make sure nothing melts. And of course, it's easier on my fingers. <laughs> All right, guys, so then I'm all done with the bottom um, or covering the bottom. And then now I'm going to move on to the top. The um, little holes that I made is because I am going to create a design on the top. And um, you can, if you're going to recreate this, you can make any design. You can just loop it all around and that's fine. But I wanted to keep that triangle V kind of design. So I cut a long piece of the raffia ribbon and um, I'm just going to, at, at this point, I'm just kind of trying to see. Again, I haven't done it before, so I know what I want in my mind. I'm just trying to figure out how to make that happen. So I am going to, again, create that V triangle kind of look with the, with the raffia ribbon. And I'm just going to show you here kind of how I did it. And this was the part that took the longest because you have to thread all that ribbon <laughs> so many times, um, but it was so worth it. And I'm just going to show you a little bit in the beginning and a little bit towards the end so that you can kind of see the design that I, or how I made the design. So you see there, instead of going to the other hole, I'm just going to go back 
See, not like that. I'm just going to go back to that other hole again. And that will create uh, the next V. And if you do not have a drill to create the holes, you can certainly, I'm assuming, and I didn't, I should have tried it because I have a very good hole puncher. You can certainly try a hole puncher. If you have like a, like, like one that would go that deep, I think it would, it would work just fine. And guys, I just did this all around the, the upper rim and <clears throat> creating that, um, And again, I'm sorry that I'm kind of focusing on this um, shot a lot in the rim. Just for those who want to recreate this, I just wanted to keep it there and kind of just show you how I'm doing the design because it could get confusing. I kept getting confused and I was doing it like a hundred times. <laughs> so I just, that's why I'm, I keep, I, I stayed on this shot for a little bit just to make sure that I show you. And there it is, guys. Look how cute. I mean, you can't even tell that it was a empty container from disinfecting wipes and it just looks so chic so beautiful and then uneven lines I showed you right there you can see that one hole is uneven but honestly now looking at it hey it is what it is it looks fine um, but ideally I would have kept it nice and straight Alright guys, so for DIY number three, I am working with this empty muffin box. These are one of the boxes that come with multiple packages of these little tiny muffins that my kids absolutely love. And it's a pretty sturdy box. And then I'm taking these two scrap drawer sides. These belong to the side of some drawers so long ago i don't even know what i did with the actual or where they came from i just know that i've had them and i didn't want to toss them so i'm going to take them outside to my miter saw and just make a few cuts cutting off the edges to remove that dovetail um, uh, design and then i'm just going to make a couple of um, angled cuts to ensure that i have kind of like a house like a tall house and you'll see what i'm talking about so what I'm doing here with the box and just kind of measuring where the box is, like, so the length of the box or the height. And that way when I take it out to the miter box, I kind of know where the box is going to end up so that I know where to make the angled cuts. And if you do not have a miter saw, you can certainly use a hand saw with a miter box i have used those in the past now this these drawer sides were pretty heavy duty they were pretty solid so it would have taken them in a little bit too long using the hand saw but um, if you're using any other type of wood you can certainly use your miter box so here's what it looks like as you can see it just looks like a very tall house and then i'm taking a dowel that i'm going to use here in a little bit and i'm just gonna measure the width or the circumference I guess and just marking it where I want so I'm going to make a hole on each top of them I'm using a spade bit from a kit that I got a while ago and I rarely use these I usually use my drill bits but um, it's nice using these because they're bigger and I think faster there you have it the dowel fits perfectly and then I'll do the same thing on the other one All right, so now I am going to take the box and I'm just going to put a lot of hot glue there on the one side. 
because now it's time to put everything together with the side so I'm going to place the side just like that and then I'm flip it over so that I can then secure it with staples and I'm using my electric stapler but you can certainly use a manual one this is just what I have what I have on hand and I'm just going to put quite a bit of staples because I want this to be nice and secure and it has the hot glue as well so that'll help keep it secure and I'll do the same thing on the other side Once everything was secure, I gave the entire thing two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint and the linen white. So if you haven't kind of realized by now, I am going to make kind of like a toolbox or a farmhouse style uh, basket where you can plant things or carry things with this box. Guys, I just love chalk paint and Rust-Oleum chalk paint is so inexpensive. I use it all the time and it just has good coverage. I just love it. All right, so now I'm taking the dowel. Everything is dry. I added two coats and I'm just measuring where the dowel should be cut at. And this is the miter box I was telling you about earlier. It works really well with smaller, thinner woods, but you can certainly use for thicker ones. It'll just take a little while longer. And obviously be very, very careful when you are doing this. Take your time. I do have this and other of the other of supplies that I am using today in my Amazon store, which is linked down below. All right, so I made the cut and now I'm just going to thread the dowel through and as you can tell i haven't painted it yet because i didn't want to do this part after it was painted and then scratch the paint so that's why it still looks bare it's a perfect fit and so perfect indeed that i had to grab my hammer for assistance all right so now i'm going to take a piece of scrap fabric that I have had and um, not to worry that it's wrinkled or anything this is just to cover the inside so I folded over a little bit of the top to create kind of like a nice rim and then I am going to use hot glue to secure it to the edge of the inside of the box this is still it's finished it looks I didn't have to do this because if I'm just going to use it to store things or to put florals in. You won't see the bottom and I did paint the inside rim. However, I just wanted it to look a little bit more finished and so I decided to cover the inside. And this is a simple thing or simple procedure I have done in other projects and it just works so good where you just take a little bit of hot glue and line the top rim and then just make sure very carefully that you don't burn yourself that the fabric um, attaches to it i'm not worried about the excess fabric on the inside because it's all going to lay flat on the sides and on the bottom so i'm okay with that but you can always cut it to size but i just don't i didn't think it was necessary All 
All right, so now I am going to take my yardstick and I'm just going to mark two inches, every two inches, because the box is eight inches high. So every two inches would was perfect for this particular box. I'm just going to mark on each side so that I can then draw some lines going across to create a shiplap kind of look. And I am using a permanent thick marker for this. And I repeated the process on the other side. I then decided to take the country gray chalk paint by Rust-Oleum and just kind of just dress the whole uh, toolbox um, out. And in on the lines for the uh, shiplap lines are just also adding a little bit just for dimension and just for added uh, little details. And then on the sides, I, des I decided to just kind of brush very lightly to add a little bit of distress look. And then because the doll is still not painted, I did decide to paint the doll in the country gray. I was going to do it white, but you know what? I had the country gray out and open and I thought, let's just do it country gray. It'll blend in and it'll be nice and, and um, painted and I don't have to take the white out again. So then I had these leftover decals there from another project that I did several weeks ago. And I thought it'd be super cute to add these to the bottom of the box. And this will finish it off guys. That would be it. I'm so excited at how this turned out. Can you believe this was a box of muffins? I it truly cannot I cannot believe this turned out this way. I'm so happy with the way it turned out. And the sides are wood, but guys, if you don't have wood, you can also use foam board because if all you're going to put there is florals or something light, foam boards would be more than enough and more than sufficient. All right, guys, so this is it for today. I'm so happy with the way these three crafts turned out. Let me know on the bottom in the comments which one is your favorite. And if you're visiting for the first time and you haven't subscribed, I hope that you consider doing so and joining our our youtube family and if you're returning thank you so much and guys as always i hope you have a blessed blessed day bye